All right, so we're using the projectile launcher uh, today. And so a couple things uh, that you need to know. One, there are three different settings here. Uh, there is the long, medium, and short. Now when you put the ball in and you use the ramrod, you can either count clicks. So that's one click right there. Uh, but also, just in case. You want to pull it in so that they can see. So also, if you'll notice that short range right there, and if you lose track of the number of clicks, then you can always sort of tilt it this way. And I don't know if, can you? Yeah, you can. The yellow? Yeah. All right, and you can see how far it's gone. So if I do it a second time, then the yellow should be on the medium at the moment, mm -hmm. and then the third time on the long. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and discharge this. because I don't want it actually shooting off when I don't want it to. Uh, with, this has a couple other features. One, there's also an angle indicator. Sorry. No, 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 actually bring it back over here. All right, so we have an angle indicator here. Uh, so for the first part, we're gonna need it at 90 degrees and we can also adjust it as we will throughout the lab at various angles right there. And then the angle indicator tells you the, the angle at which it's being shot. Also called a plumb bomb. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the voice that you're hearing is a ghost. No, the voice you're hearing is my wife who has graciously decided, uh, has okay. agreed, thank you, has agreed to come in and film this. So whether she shows up on film at any point is up to her. All right, so as I think we've done a projectile launch one before, and that's right, we did a projectile motion lab, so you're familiar with the fact that when you pull it, make sure that you pull it with consistency because how fast you pull it will affect the distance it goes. Hmm. So the first part of the lab is trying to figure out what setting do we need to put this on. Uh, when we did projectile motion, you just basically picked one, uh, but now there is a limit to it because we eventually will be shooting it straight up and we don't want it to hit the ceiling. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna set this thing on 90 degrees and then we're gonna try the short setting, medium setting, and long setting, and just to see what happens, just to see how close we can get to the ceiling without actually hitting it. It's not quite 90 degrees. I, I, I'll adjust in just a second. Okay. So why don't we take a break on the filming for right now, and. All right, so I'm gonna shoot this, so I'll put it, first put it on the short setting. Check to make sure it's on the short setting. And then I'm going to launch it. I've already set this thing at 90 degrees and it's still at 90 degrees, which is a good sign. And so now I'm just gonna see how high up it goes. It doesn't come close to the ceiling. So I'm hoping that's not the last one we end on because that's, frankly, I find a very boring setting. So now we're gonna go for the medium setting. See how high up this goes. Three, two, one. And now, at this point, you can probably guess what the long setting is going to do. Let's go ahead and do it anyway. Double check, make sure it's on long. And we fire it up. And that's the long setting. So at this point, we are now gonna set up for, we need to figure out what the muzzle velocity is of the, of the projectile launcher. So this is the shooting horizontally onto the ground. You've done something very similar to this in a previous lab. Uh, it's the part after that, which is where it differentiates. So right now we're gonna take a pause. All right, so I, for this part, I need to shoot it as horizontally as possible. So I'm trying to get it on zero. I was just a little bit too far one way then I put it too far the other way. So I'm trying to get it to zero exactly. I'm trying to move this as gently as possible. So I want the, the string that the plumb bob's attached to to line up with zero right there. And then once that's in place, I'm gonna clamp it and hopefully that does not change it too much. And I need to make sure that I check that each time. Now another check on this, whether it's zero degrees or not, is when I put the ball in there and I push it back, does the ball roll forward at all? And so let me put it on this medium because that came closest to the ceiling. All right, so the ball's not rolling forward. That is just slightly off zero degrees again. So let's make that adjustment. I 
think it's the closest I'm gonna be able to get. There, I think that's, I think that's sort of lined up. Uh, I also have two clamps on this because I don't want this to move at all once I'm ready to start shooting. And so at this point, we will take a pause. Uh, actually, no, not yet. Did you pause it? All right, thank you. All right, so let's get the table in place. We need to have some idea about where it's gonna hit so we know where to put the aluminum foil down. Get myself some room. Now, it's not gonna go too far. It's far more dramatic going up than down. <laughs> Oops, I can't wait. I forgot there was a ball in there already. All right, so it's a medium setting. So now I'm just going to pull it just to see where it lands. All right, three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. All right. So it was about here, somewhere around there. So I, I have an estimated shot. Yeah, I didn't get that. No. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're going to pause it. I'm going to grab some aluminum foil and we're going to set that up. All right. So uh, I'm going to shoot it one more time. The aluminum, I don't expect it to hit the aluminum foil right now uh, because I have the aluminum foil beside where I saw it hit. This is just a, a, another test shot just to make sure that I've gotten roughly the same area. So. Here we go, three, two, one. All right, that looks like if the aluminum foil were over, it would indeed hit it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and tape the aluminum foil down. And I think we can just keep rolling to this. This should not take too long. And we have to tape the aluminum foil down because when the ball hits it, it's going to apply a force in this direction and over time, that the aluminum foil will move more and more towards the, the front wall. All right, so now, if it's lined up properly, we're gonna do our first real shot. All right, and here we go. Three, two, one, go. Apparently I was a little off. So because if the table happens to get shifted, I, I do need to mark the place where the, I, I need to mark the table so that I can always check. And so I'm gonna put a piece of tape here. All right, so let us now move this. So double check the legs. All right, so here we go. Three, two, one, go. And there we go, we have a mark, our first mark right there. And so what we're gonna do is, uh, I needed to grab a black marker just so we can mark it. We're gonna do that 10 times and then we're gonna measure the distance that the ball actually travels horizontally. I also need to measure the vertical height. So for right now, uh, we'll pause it and I will, we'll do the 10 trials. So what we're looking at here is the, the results of it. Uh, we look like we have a little bit, we have three clusterings here. There's four shots over here, there's four shots over here, and there's two shots over here. And I know it's not easy to see. Uh, let's see, that angle is slightly better. You can see the small indentations where the ball hit it. Uh, I did have to, I did adjust the angle at one point because it looked like we were getting farther off of zero. And these two shots here were for that, uh, after that adjustment. Um, still not quite sure why we seem to have three clusterings but we do, I try to pull it the same every time. Uh, but right now we need now to measure the distance, the horizontal distance from where the launcher is to where that is. And I do want to point out for the launcher over here that the ball is launched from where that circle is right there. So I need to find the point right below that onto, on the ground so that I can measure the horizontal distance. And so that I'm going to, 
pause this and we will get those measurements. Here are the horizontal displacements uh, that we just measured and the initial height from which it was shot. So it was shot 0.992 meters above the ground and it went those various distances there. So uh, we are now going to, I'm going to pause this again and set it up for the next exciting part of the lab. Sort of a, an addendum here in terms of the meter sticks. At the end, there were three meter sticks that were put end to end. And in terms of being able to read it, the, the dark marks that you can see, uh, for instance, there's, let's see if I can get my finger on the camera here. That dark mark right there, that one to that, that's 10 centimeters right there from that dark mark to that dark mark. And so then these are one centimeter increments in here. So in terms of trying to be able to pick out the measurements, uh, so, and it's also oriented correctly. So that's one meter to there, two meters to there, and then three meters all the way up there. So now we're going to shoot it at a 30 degree angle there. The initial height was the same as it was for the horizontal shot, uh, 0.992 meters. So that's the initial vertical height. And then we're going to see how far up it goes over here. So what we did is we shot it and we saw that it peaked along that line right there. And so we will get some up close and personal video of that thing being shot and from that be able to pull out some detail. Uh, so we're going to get a lot closer and so that we should be able to at least be able to freeze frame it well enough in order to get a measurement. By the way, the angle, I didn't quite get hit 30 degrees exactly. The angle is 30.9 degrees. 30.9 degrees. Or I guess first shot. Second shot. Make sure the angle is not changed. All right, we're still at 30.9 degrees. Here we go. All right, here we go. Test shot number whatever. All right, here we go. And another. And one more for good measure. I think this will be the fifth uh, in this configuration. It's still 30.9 degrees. Ready? Uh-huh. Ready? Ready. Yep. All right, I believe this is going to be shot four here. Ready? Yep. The angle that was just shot was 45.1 degrees. The first one that we did was 30.9 degrees. So I just wanted to make sure that it was stated somewhere. Yep. That was in frame. Okay, ready? Ready when you are. Whenever you are. <laughs> I was shooting for 60 degrees as the lab specifies, and but I'm a little bit off and that's okay. You just need to account for it. The angle that I, that we were, at which we were just shooting was just shy of 60 degrees, it was 59.7 degrees, 59.7 degrees. And so when you do your sines and cosines, you'll do 59.7 degrees instead of 60 degrees. And so now we're going to set up for the last, the last angle of 90 degrees. We'll be shooting it straight up. And this is why we didn't want to hit the ceiling. Ready? Yeah, can't get the damn straight. Ready when you are. <clears throat> right, ready?
ready when you are. Uh, the initial heights and uh, for the various angles. So I can't remember if I actually captured this before or not, but those are, there we go. Uh, notice we were on the table for the first four and that one we had to actually be on the floor. So, and then the more precise angle measurements. So he told me to kill him and I said I shouldn't kill him, but he insisted and so I came to the feds instead of killing the guy, even though he somehow ended up dead anyway. And, and that's why you're here helping me today? And that's why I am doing community service, helping film physics experiments.